thank you all and appreciate Brother Lynn and him teaching at Sunday school and Brother Burke being such a great witness. I mean, I could just think of each person as I heard the words of the, that song. The name of the message today is the rest of the story. <laughs> yeah, Last Sunday was rough. You know, we studied Romans chapter 7 and a chapter that I was, you'd think I was joking, but I said, Lord, I sure wish you didn't have to put Romans chapter 7 in that Bible because a man who is so close to you, yet he talks about the struggles and the fights and the things going on inside of him daily. But you know, it takes only one moment for you to come to Christ. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's no other name under heaven what you can be saved by except by courts, what my Bible says in your Bible. That's right. In Acts chapter 4, there's no other name under heaven whereby you can be saved Amen. except the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I'm the only door. I'm the only way. If you try to make another way, you won't make it. You will go to an everlasting fire. I don't care what other denominations and other people say there's a burning hell. Amen. If you don't know your Lord and Savior, know Jesus Christ, you're going to have to go there. God's a God to judge. It's appointed to every one of us to die. We stand before God. We're judged. And if our name is not written down in that Lamb's book of life, we go to our everlasting burning hell. Praise His name. It takes only a moment for you to get your name written down. If you never have your name written down or if you're unsure, Today's the day you need to make sure. Today's the day of salvation. Amen. The door to the Gentiles is going to close any moment. So we need to come to Christ while we got that chance. There's no other name under heaven. It takes just a moment to come to Christ. Just a moment. But it takes a lifetime to become Christ's life. Amen. And God comes and gets us because we never will reach that point. But my friend, we need to grow. We need to grow in God. We need to get, we've been on the milk of the word, now it's time to grow up. Now my daughter's back there. When she was born, she favored her daddy so much she was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it was a case that I didn't know she was going to make it. But God's so fit to that. And I had the privilege, you know, I would hold her and I would burp her. And I feed her this milk, that special little milk, and all this and that. But you know what? How long ago was that? 39 years ago. 39 years ago. <laughs> if I was having to burp her and give her a bottle right now, something would be wrong, wouldn't it? Yep. But spiritually, some of us still have to have a bottle and be burped, and God's not happy with us. Amen. It's time for us to mature in the things of God. There is false teachings going on that take the bits and pieces of the Bible, but not the whole Bible. God's a loving God, yes. But the Bible also says that there's times that when you first come to, to my son, the Savior, Jesus, I would wink at what you would do. But now it's time that I do not wink at it anymore. You need the meat of the word. You need to grow up in the things of the word. You know when Jesus was teaching and he was feeding them milk, multiplying them little boys as lunches, Multitudes, you couldn't count them. In fact, Jesus said, don't tell anybody else. It was so many, it was unsafe. But then something began to happen. If you read the Bible, Jesus would say something. Now, you know, this is pretty right here. A person made that. A person made that. I appreciate y'all. Amen. But 2,000 years ago, you didn't see one of them hanging on nobody's wall. Amen. In fact, when somebody said the cross, they would tremble and they would shake. 
And Jesus says, unless you take up your cross and follow me, you won't make it. And you know what they say? That's a hard saying. Who can bear it? Hundreds left him. Thousands left him. And the more he ministered, the smaller the crowd. Think about it. They knew. Many of them knew. For a fact. They saw them that was raised from the dead when Jesus cried out and gave up the spirit and went into the heart of the earth and says they was raised up out of the dead and they walked around knocking on the doors and witnessing come up out of the grave and did it. And Jesus told Mary, he said, wait, you can't touch me yet. I got to go to heaven. I got to take this blood there. You know, Adam's and Eve's power went on to heaven, their prayer. So Jesus took that blood a few minutes later. He said, now you can hug me. You can love me. You can hold me. You can touch me. But what I'm telling you is people knew that Jesus Christ was the son of the living God. He was crucified, he was buried, and he rose from the dead. But yet the crowds, even after the 40 days, he preached on the word of God, taught the word of God. Each day the crowd got smaller. They didn't want to hear what he had to say. They didn't want to take up a cross and follow him. The sign of death. They didn't want that. You know what? In Acts chapter 1, his last words, he said, Don't you leave Jerusalem until you go into the upper room and you pray and you seek me until you're filled with the Holy Spirit, until the power of God comes upon you. And let me tell you, he told it to 500. 380 went to the house. 120 went into that upper room. But praise God for the 120. Amen. That 120 reached the whole world. But they was only in one little place. And the first day when they come out of that upper room, 3,000 came to Christ. They never saw people that happy before in their life. I told y'all that one morning I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, no wonder when I invite people to come to church, I don't come. I look so unhappy. <laughs> I didn't know I looked that bad. <laughs> Let me tell you, they reached out to 3,000 and 5,000 more. And then it says every day people was coming to Christ. But persecution arose. Hard times arose. Is that sad? You know what happened? We, me and you never would have got saved. Me and you never would have got over here in, in America. Or right, ever, what, where we went or how we went. Persecution arose for a reason, and they had to leave certain areas to not be martyred to preach the gospel of Christ. God lets everything work for good, though you can't explain it. Not everything's good, but it works for good. Amen. And I'm here to tell you that. So it's time to grow up. I'm in the book of First Thessalonians, chapter five, verse twenty-three. It takes only a moment to be born again, and you need to be. Amen. But every day you need to work on growing up in Christ, <laughs> dying to self. I, I, I'm talking to myself. Now listen, some of you might not, not need to hear it, but I appreciate you sitting in on what I need to hear. <laughs> I need it. First, of that, first Thessalonians. If you forgot your Bible, it'd be one in the hook pew somewhere. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 16. I really wanted to skip, you know, not read this, but I can't help but read verse 16. Look what it says. What does that say? Rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. It don't say walk on your bottom lip, does it? <laughs> Rejoice evermore. And what does that say in verse 17? Pray without ceasing. What does that say in verse 18? And everything give thanks. But this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Verse 19, quench not the spirit. Listen, let's don't stop God from moving. Let's don't get in the way. Verse 21, prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Verse 22, 
Abstain from how much? All appearances of evil. Even the appearance of it. Get away from it. Stay away from it. Now, verse 23, what does that say? And the very God of peace sanctify you. That means set you apart. Put you aside. Now, look at it now with me. Verse 23. The very, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And it would be good to study that word. That means complete every part of you. And I pray, God, you're whole. And I want you to get this in correct order. Because if you're not careful, you speak it in the reverse order. And that's what happened at the fall. It got reversed. All right? I start over. Verse 23. The very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body. Three different parts. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three is the number of God. And let me tell you what. He says, I pray God your whole spirit, your whole soul, and your whole body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calls you who also will do it. You must be born again. That takes one moment. We must repent. We must call on the name of the Lord. We, we must change our way. But when you were saved, what was saved? When you were born again, what was born again? It was your spirit. And that's the order that we were made in. Your spirit is in the likeness of God. Your spirit lives forever. You see, a spirit never dies. That's the reason hell was built. The angels have a spirit. Your spirit's greater, the Bible says that. It's an image of God. But God gave the angels a spirit, but it's not in God's image. Angels live forever. So when Lucifer fell, and a third of the angels fell, God built a prison since a spirit will never die. It's called hell. But Lucifer is such a hateful creature until he's getting joy out of hurting God. You created the image of God and Lucifer, the devil, wants you to burn in hell where he's going to burn forever. He's that hateful. So your whole spirit, the spirit is what got saved. What about your soul and body? My soul needs help. <laughs> what is your soul? Your mind, mind will, your will, your emotions. emotions. And let me tell you about my mind. What I need to remember, that sounds like Romans chapter 7. I, I, I forget. And I don't care if it happened 69 years ago something happened that I should forget I still remember yeah your, your soul is your mind your will your emotions alright how did God build us spirit soul body alright our soul is our mind will emotions your spirit's all they got born again but you begin to work in the Word of God. Work on your soul. And the last thing that's going to be dealt with is really our bodies. With your mind, will, and emotions. What does God say in Romans chapter 1 or chapter 12 also? He says, renew your mind. Change your thinking. Begin to think only on good things. Do not. In fact, when the flood took place, what was they doing? Their mind was thinking only evil. They had their mind only on evil. And, and, and I'm concerned today. You turn the TV on, looks like the only thing people's thinking oh, about man. is yes. evil. Yes. We are at the day where we are at the mark of when the flood came. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be when I come again, says the Lord. Except this time it won't be by water, but it'll be by fire. I'll destroy this whole world. 
Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. It said we are to work on our thinking, change our thinking. It says think only on time wise. I'm just going to tell you what it says. Think only on the good things. Don't think on the bad. So that's your mind, will, and emotions. That's your soul. And then your body. That's the last thing it's going to be really dealt with. But that's our flesh. And Romans chapter 6, Paul says, I know within my flesh dwelleth no good thing. So I have to deal with that. So I'm going to sum things up quickly for you. So I'm going to hold you. God created a spirit. He gave us a soul and a body. The spirit is to tell the soul, your mind, will, and emotions, what the body is to do. Amen. But when Adam and Eve sinned, it got reversed, and people quoted this away. We're made body, soul, and they don't even mention the spirit. You see what it means? It is the spirit of God deals with your spirit. The word I speak to you is spirit and life, said Jesus. The spirit is to tell your mind, will, and emotions what to do, how to act, what to think, and then your mind, will, and emotions tells your body what to do. But what surprises me is the power of this body, this flesh. Uh, it's some stuff I need to learn still, but that flesh has got some power. Oh, boy. I mean some serious power. <laughs> it makes me wonder uh, a little bit, and I'm trying to study it's more than just natural. That body is powerful. That flesh is powerful. That flesh, it wants something. It's going to fight to get it. And, and you know, the, the cross is for that flesh to die on. And Jesus said, unless you take up my cross and follow me, you won't make it. John the Baptist said these words. If you notice the timing, that's the way it happened to you. John the Baptist says... Jesus must increase. I have to decrease. Jesus cannot increase until I decrease. Jesus cannot increase in Reggie Foreman's life until Reggie Foreman decreases. It's too much Reggie Foreman and not enough Jesus. And it's not room for both. I got to die to myself. I got to crucify that flesh. I got to deal with it. Amen. So our bodies, the flesh, is supposed to listen under the leadership, the authority of what the spirit tells the soul, and the soul tells the body. But that flesh says, I want to stop by Wendy's and get me two large hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> and so therefore the car turns in at Wendy's and you get two large hamburgers. <laughs> and the large Coca-Cola. <laughs> and the large fry. That body's strong, ain't it? Oh yeah. But let me tell you something. We got loving God. And I want you to understand it's time for us to mature. I'm talking to myself. We need to grow up. And I close with a story I told before. A man had a dream. He was a logger. He could have been from Mississippi. I was reading another book. Didn't even give his name. But he, he was in the woods walking and he was carrying a cross because he came to Christ. But he was dreaming. And the cross was so heavy that he walked up to the saw hand that was in the woods working that he was having to walk through with the cross. It says, it's so heavy, cut about this much off. That saw hand cranked up that 066 steel, <laughs> cut about two foot of it off. He said, that feels better now. He goes on with his journey, then began to see. People was carrying a cross, but he noticed they would take the cross and lay it across. A great gulf. Uh oh. And then he would walk that cross into paradise. This is a dream he had. He walked up to that same gulf 
And when he threw his cross in, he was that much too short. And he didn't like it. You can't trim anything off. If God said it, that settles it. Amen. That's good. God created a spirit, soul, and body. Jesus says the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And your spirit tells your soul and, and what to do. But you've got to renew your mind. And I, you know, I could be reading the Bible. And next thing I know, I'm working on a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Wondering how I'm going to free that piston up. Oh, I said, yeah. wait a minute, that ain't in the Bible. Oh, yeah. And am I the only one that does that? No. <laughs> <laughs> so we, our minds can really, they can really go a different way. So we've got to. Bring them to know God and serve God. So God created a spirit, soul, and body. And let's let it be in that order. If you never asked the Lord in your heart today is the day to do that. If you never said, Lord, I want to commit to you and take up the cross and follow you. Today's the day to make that commitment to God. Don't try to trim it. You won't make it. Turn it over to you, Brother Lamb.